Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Jusur. My guest today has become an icon of London, almost as famous as Big Ben, the House of Parliament, Westminster Abbey and the Tower Bridge. Nine years ago in June 2001, my guest began a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week vigil in Parliament Square to protest against the economic sanctions imposed against Iraq. Since then, millions of tourists have made the deliberate journey to see my guest, observe his many posters and banners, and be pictured with him. His vigil now includes the protest against the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, as well as the support of the Palestinian people. Despite numerous attempts by government and the police to end his vigil, some through imposing new laws banning protests in Parliament Square, my guest remains rooted in his tent opposite the main entrance of Parliament, where no member of the House can avoid seeing him on their way to office every day. His determination and resilience are an inspiration, and he has been awarded several uh, awards recognizing his struggle in support of the oppressed around the world. My guest today is Brian Hall. Brian, thank you very much for joining us on Jusur today. It's an absolute pleasure. And if I may start by asking you what seems to be a very obvious question. Why did you decide nine years ago, why did you decide to do this? Why did you decide on this particular method? There are many other ways that you could have protested whilst remaining at home with your family. Why did you decide to set up this continuous vigil outside Parliament? I'll explain in words that your people can understand better. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. Allah Akbar. You're very familiar with this. Yes. My country. God is great. What do they know of God? What is this country called USA? United States of Assassins who put on their banknotes in God we trust. What do they trust in? Some of us know God. Some of us understand God. I came on June the 2nd, 2001. I was sent to Parliament Square because somebody upstairs does love and care. I had a small placard and it said, Stop killing kids. I enlarged that later on to say, stop killing our kids. Mm. Make peace, not war. Let Iraq infants live. Let all children live, eh? Mm. I came to Parliament Square because I discovered what my country, GB, Great Britain, genocidal Britain, check it out folks, ask the world, what have we done? We were torturing and murdering the babes, the innocents in this place called Iraq. So cruel, so heartless, so callous. I'm a father. I love my children. I have no evidence that you as a father in another country don't equally love your child. And your child isn't just as precious to you. Mm. I had all the evidence that that is indeed the case. Because I have been around the world. I do know how the world ticks. We are all... God's children, we're all pretty much the same deep down <coughs> where it matters. I've had all the people come to see me in the last nine years, 24-7, from every corner of the globe. And the one thing we all have in common, hope, salam, we're adil, lejimir, shalom, love, peace, justice for all, peace, now, that is our anthem at Parliament Square Peace Campaign. Mm. Who's to argue with it? Hope, Salam, Wa Adil, Lejimir. What did you do before starting your vigil? Many things. Mm. Many things. But you were obviously following events in Iraq and other parts of the world enough to get you totally uh, into this, this particular um, method of, of protesting. I had a small sign by the side <coughs> of the road before the police stole it and it said, stop killing our kids, 24 hour siege, day, whatever it was, as long as it takes. Yeah. You can see on parliament-square.org.uk how many days. Mm. It's over 3,000 days and nights now. Mm. Two o'clock one morning, a man who'd had a bit to drink comes along. 
and he asks me, why are you here in the winter, in the cold of the winter at two o'clock in the morning outside our British Parliament? Mm. Thank you, I said. That's a good question. Why am I here? Stop killing our kids. Mm. Who are our kids, he says. Bear in mind, this is a man who's had a bit to drink. Yes. He was very much in control of himself. I would say he's always in control of himself, unlike many of the other people who've had a drink and sent along to abuse us. Mm. Who are our kids? Who are not our kids, I asked him. Mm. He was a military policeman who'd been in Basra, a British military policeman. Stop killing any of our kids. Most of all, the millions of our children, mm. born in Arabia, Afghanistan, elsewhere. Millions we're talking about. Stop killing any of our British children who come home in a box with a Union Jack on it, and everyone a hero, mm. a hero. God forgive us, my country, is in denial, you know. My country is committing infanticide, genocide, torture, looting of nations, is what we are doing, is what we've been doing for centuries, but it's so gross. Mm -hmm. We've dropped a couple of thousands of tons of our nuclear waste. It's called depleted uranium munitions. Mm -hmm. We've dropped this on Iraq, Afghanistan, Serbia, Kosovo, elsewhere, elsewhere. See what it does to the babes. The Royal Society tells us that depleted uranium has a half-life of 4.5 billion years. Mm. See what a smidgen of it does to the babe. Mm. There was a picture at the front of our display <coughs> there that we managed to save face of the enemy in Kabul. And for those who are old enough to remember Vietnam, face of the enemy in Hanoi, there's always another face, always another enemy. They were the communists then. Mm. We're supposed to believe it's the Muslims and the Arabs today. No, sir. No, sir. We won't accept that. What, I mean, the millions that have flocked to your vigil from all around the world, as you, as you put it, over the past um, nine years, What's, what are the comments? I mean, are they comments of surprise, uh, wonderment as to why you're doing this? Um, are they messages of support? Are they messages of criticism that maybe you've got it wrong? What kind of overall, what is this, the overall sentiment that you get from people all around the world who come and want to be pictured next to you or next to your stand? There's a very callous, I would say stupid and ignorant man who cycles by on his bicycle, quite regular, and his one word, as he cycles by, misguided. Mm. Oh, really? Come and tell me how so. I had a banner there. It said, Genocide of Iraq Infants, Innocence, USA, GB, Stop Now. It was there, a ginormous banner, mm. for five and a half years. I did have people come along wanting to argue with me. Mm. wanted to talk about bloody blah and Saddam Hussein the monster do Blah -blah. you get many of those not so many these days of course Saddam's dead now isn't yeah. he however when they wanted to come along to me and go blah blah I would say do your homework check it out the reason I'm here is because my eyes have been opened mm. there was a man called Dennis Halliday yes he was the assistant secretary general of the United Nations no less mm. And this is the man that said genocide, not me, not mm. Joe Bloggs on the streets, mm. somebody who was responsible for the humanitarian relief of Iraq after it had been so tragically, so criminally destroyed in the first Gulf War. He resigned in October 98 saying the economic sanctions against the people of Iraq are genocide. Mm. A man called Count Hans von Spanek, mm. his successor, he spoke equally strongly, equally. Mm. But to us, the British with our racism, one is an Irishman, Dennis Halliday, the other is a German, Count Hans von Spanek. I tell you what, there were good men of integrity, and there are good men of integrity standing up, but far more of us need to stand up. My no. nation mm. is in denial. Mm. 
in denial of what we're doing. Well, let me come to our nation. I mean, one of the, uh, the biggest challenges that you face, besides the, uh, the, the weather elements, uh, often very, very harsh, which you've withstood... I'm uh, sorry. Can, can you remember that for one moment? I've just remembered... Of course, yes. When Karen. people come to me and ask me about the banner and, yes. and they want to talk about Saddam Hussein, I had a man the other day come to me. He calls himself this two million dead. He says, blah, 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 blah. Of course, it's well out of date, isn't it? It's far more than two million now. Mm. The banner is out of date. Mm. And he wants to tell me that he's Iraqi. I said, You're not Iraqi. You're not even human. Mm -hmm. He's telling me, Saddam Hussein, Saddam. No, it is us, folks. We have done this to these people, the British and the Americans. We have committed genocide. If you're in any, any doubt, ask the world what the British do. Mm. Ask those people called Red Indians what the Americans do. We're very good at genocide, mm. aren't we? Or very bad at it. So, tell me about your challenge um, against the, the establishment, either in terms of the government and certain laws being passed, preventing protests, taking part, in that particular area which you uh, occupy and also and maybe more importantly uh, your challenge against the uh, treatment of the police because they haven't been kind to you have they um, and we've deliberately left your crutches uh, here in the shot um, so tell us a little bit about, about that particular struggle I will I will first and foremost I'll do the little commercial break. I want to show my T-shirt before... Where's the camera there? Yep. It's all about lies, isn't it? Lies. Afghan, lies. Iraq, lies. Torture, lies. Blair and Brown, lies. We're here for the truth. And the truth will set us free. You better believe it, folks. Hmm. A little girl called Zainab came to see me. Ten years old, from Basra. What are the odds against this, William Hill, Ladbrook, the ones who do the betting? A sweet little girl from Arabia, hardly a word of English. She has a metal leg. Mm. Mr. Tony Blair, the former Prime Minister, bombed her family. Seventeen members of her family dead, including her mother. She's lost her leg little steel leg. She's a lucky little girl. She's been brought to Britain and had a new steel leg. She's not very grateful to Mr. Blair. At Brighton, at the Labour Party conference that year, this little girl was nearly run down by part of the convoy for Tony Blair. What's the odd against that? Mm. Bombed in Brighton, nearly run down. Sorry. Bombed in Basra. Bombed in Basra, nearly run down in Brighton. Mm. What's Tony Blair have against this little girl from Arabia called Zainab? What did she do wrong, folks? Mm. So she was born yeah. in mm. the wrong country at mm. the wrong time. And that is the obscenity mm. of it all, isn't it? So tell me about how you were treated by the police and why. Because every child is precious. Your child precious is my child. It's why we're here. Oh. It's all relative, isn't it? The police have crippled me. They've crushed my lower vertebrae. How did that happen? They threw me down so violently on the ground. I have the recording of them doing so. Mm -hmm. But it's re a relatively small crime compared to what we're doing elsewhere. And the reason they did this crime against me is because of what we're doing elsewhere. My government is committing infanticide, genocide, torture, looting of nations. I'm talking to Arabia. I don't need to persuade anybody out there, do I? Mm. What I do need to do is open the eyes. Open the eyes to see the suffering of the others. Mm. Open the heart to feel for them. Mm. And then finally, open the mind to do right by everyone. Mm. By everyone. How did you... How that was my orders when I was sent to Parliament Square. Mm. How did you withstand the, uh, the laws that were passed uh, prohibiting or banning protests in Parliament Square? We, we use the law. Mm. The law is very a very good thing, you know, to mm. use against the lawless. When it works, yes. The problem is what we need is international law. Mm. International. 
our country, it has no law. Why do the police sent to attack me? Because our parliament is committing genocide. How can you have a lawful law force while parliament is committing genocide? Mm. If the police were what they should be, murder is a crime, isn't it? Mm. Serial killing's a crime. Genocide, the biggest crimes on the books we're committing right now. Of course the police are corrupt, otherwise... You believe that? You really think that the police are corrupt? I don't believe that. I know that. I've had first-hand evidence all the way through. Sir Ian Blair is a thief. He was the former commissioner. He's actually admitted he's a thief in his new book. There was no lawful right or reason for him to seize 45 meters display that myself and the people of our country, the people of the world, we expressed ourselves on that pavement opposite Parliament. Mm. I had up to 30 different languages, expressions in all different languages. I painted many of them. I'm painting in, uh, in Persian, mm. and that's a very elegant. It took me forever doing that. Of mm. course, somebody from Iran would just go wallop, 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 it would be done, but it was a good expression mm. from Turkey. Wonderful expression from Turkey. Peace and equity. Mm. Peace and equity for every person and every nation. Yes? What kind of encounters do you have with parliamentarians coming by every single day, passing by your strip of, of land in Parliament Square? Does, do any of them come across have a word, have an argument maybe, ask a question, give an observation. You've noticed what it is in Parliament Square. There's a green, Yes. there's five lanes of rushing traffic. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a moat. You know mm -hmm. the ancient castles? That's called Westminster Palace across the mm -hmm. other side of the road. There are the gates, there are the armed guards with their machine guns to protect the, the corrupt, the corrupt protecting the corrupt. They fortunately have these uh, five lanes of rushing steel. It's very hard to get across that side of the road. Mm. Lord Justice Moses commented on that. Mm. When I was taken to court at the Royal Courts of Justice on the 2nd of October, 2006, was it? Mm. Oh, no, no, 2002, mm. right, right at the beginning of my demonstration. There's no obstruction. Anyway, no one goes over that side of the road. You can't get across. There's no pedestrian crossings. Now tell me, what's the real reason Westminster Council are prosecuting Mr. Hall? Mm. I really want to know. It was a smart bunny, Lord Justice Moses. And you know, a few years later, he was reported in a newspaper, and there's an article there, and there's us mentioned in this article. And it says, uh, he says, how people accept what judges say, how they accept it, in so much as a man storms out of the Royal Courts of Justice, the Court of Appeal, calling the judge a Nazi, it's astonishing it doesn't happen more often. <laughs> We're talking about people's lives, he said. Mm. God bless him for that. Mm. That caused a few uh, eruptions up above because that case was the Commissioner of Police, Sir Ian Blair, Charles Clark, the former Home Secretary, were appealing against losing to me the previous year. Mm. Because it had to been to court, at the High Court, and they decided, Lady Grey and her colleagues, I was lawful, I can speak outside the British Parliament against genocide, torture, etc. On behalf of love, peace, justice for all, I am lawful in doing that. I am committing no crime. We are standing up against the greatest crimes of all, aren't we? Mm. We won in the High Court, and to his shame, Lord Clark, Master of the Rolls, the next year, bent it like Beckham, mm. and he made possible, oh, in my Christian Bible it says, with God all things are possible. And Lord Clark made possible the impossible. How could I possibly comply by giving the Commissioner six clear days notice in writing prior to starting a, a campaign that started four years and three months before this new law came into being? Mm. How could I do that? We have in the British law that you cannot do 
punish somebody retrospectively. Yes. You cannot do that. Well, they did that. They stole all of that <coughs> display on account of Lord Clark bending it like Beckham. Mm. It was no power of seizure, by the way, under Sokba. You had no lawful right to seize somebody's expression. They could have put me in prison or fined me. That's all they could have done. They couldn't steal my expression or your expression. Oh, by the way, did you know it's unlawful to walk into other people's countries and steal them and their lives? Mm -hmm. Do you know the greatest war crime? What they hung the Nazis for at Nuremberg was to initiate a war of aggression. Mm -hmm. And they said at Nuremberg, from that war crime come all the other war crimes. It's logical, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. common sense. So what we say, and when I first came to Parliament Square, the message was, we can do this the right way, with love, with peace, with justice for all. We don't have to go around killing and stealing. Of course the Arabian people are going to sell us their oil. What else are they going to do with it? Eat it? Mm. They have nothing else, mm. sand if you please, but mm. all that wealth, and all that wealth under the sands of Iraq, all that wealth in the Caspian Sea, the oil and the gas and the American pipeline mm. and the poppy in Helmand, the illicit drugs industry, the second biggest money-making racket in the world, the arms industry, the number one money-making racket in the world. It's all about making money, folks, mm. out of the suffering of others. No, it isn't. Mm. It must stop. Can I, because unfortunately we're... Uh, we have about two minutes left, but I must end on um, your, your adding the issue of Palestine to the long list of, of countries and, and causes that you fought. Started with there a long while ago, didn't it? How, how did that come about? What is your take on It was on never added. Mm. There's been a little bit of misunderstanding regarding... I didn't come to Parliament Square regarding Iraq in particular. I had a small placard there that said, a genocide too far. Mm. My dad was a British sniper in the First World War. He went into this place called Bergen-Belsen. My dad was the saviour of those people. Mm. Twenty years later, my dad gassed himself. My dad didn't say a word to me about being a sniper going into Bergen-Belsen. But he did teach me that you don't get peace by shooting people. Never did, never will. You never shoot the right ones, do you? Bush and Blair. Mr. Obama, Mr. Obama, Mr. Brown, Mr. Cameron, none of these people are going to be in the trenches, are they? Mm. Just another young man. My child, your child. Stop killing the children. Mm. It's time it stopped. It's time the world woke up. Mm. We need international law. If anybody commits a war crime, they have to be taken to justice. The mm. idea that USA and UK can do it with impunity Mm. is wrong. Mm. They are outlaws. We are the rogue states. Mm. We have to stop being like this. We can be good people. I know the people of USA. I know the people of UK. We can be good, loving, kind people. But we must stop this business of walking by as if nothing's happening. Mm. We must stop being in denial, <coughs> look in the mirror, admit what we are, admit what we do, repent, change our ways. Do you get, Love our neighbours. Do you get criticism for having the, uh, the Palestinian flag? Oh, um, they hate that, outside mm. our parliament. Mm. Outside. Well, those people have been dispossessed forever, haven't they? Mm. Forever. What they've been doing to them, what we've been doing to them, it has to stop. Mm. God bless them and God bless all the people of the world. So, in, in your mind, um, Will you just carry on? I mean, wh will this um, go somewhere else? I, I learned from you today. I told that you about my dad in, <coughs> in the Second World War. I went into a place called Cambodia. Yes. I went there at Christmas, 89, when Pol Pot was on his way back in. Genocide, mm. genocide, genocide. We've had Rwanda, we've had all over the place, haven't we? And we must stop this business. Mm. of tearing each other apart and it's like the big fishes eating up and gobbling up the little fishes. Mm. Hey, we're human beings. Mm. We're made in the image of God Almighty, if you please. Mm. 
We can be wonderful people. Mm. We can be thoughtful, intelligent, loving, caring, wise. Or we can be greedy, nasty people. We have to stop being like that. Be at our best. And be responsible. Mm. The people in Parliament Square with me, the peace campaign, in particular, our dear lady called Babs Tucker from mm. USA, uh, mm. from uh, Australia mm. and from Britain. Mm. Courageous, loving, wonderful people. Akil Shah from Palestine. Mm. Good people. And we're all of the same mind and heart. We're there because we are personally responsible for what's going on. Mm. We live in a place called Britain, which is called a democracy. Yeah which means we are responsible for what our so-called leaders are doing. Mm. It's time we were took responsibility for our actions. If our country does well, we can be proud of it. When it is wrong, we have to stand up and say, not so. Mm. Brian Hall, uh, we could go on for far, far longer, but I, uh, unfortunately time is up. Uh, thank you very, very much for being our guest on Jusur today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank God you. bless you. I'm Anas Al-Tikriti. Assalamu alaikum.